All right. Welcome back to uh, Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. And today we're going to talk about the how, when, and where of trading stocks. The, it's, it's, it's the who, what, when, where, why, and how of trading. Oh. Vinny. Oh. Come on. I know, right? Yeah, it's uh, th this basically talk is tailored to the people that like come up to Dylan and I at work and ask us about like, oh, like I heard you like to trade stocks. Like, what a, what is this talk going to be about? Or like, you know, how do I do it? Like that sort of stuff. We get that yeah, all the world of investing can be very, very complicated. So this is just trying to get out basics on how if you were to start yourself, how to do it, what you need to do uh, to make this less intimidating because it's a whole it's a whole new world. It's like a different language if you don't. Exactly. Right. And if you watch our previous video, the, uh, you know, why you need to invest, you'll actually see like why it's really important that you self-educate in this area because uh, otherwise you are falling behind to a large degree. <laughs> yeah. The why is actually <laughs> the other video. The why is not answered in here. But. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, here we go. Okay. So, boom, that's the title. That's us. <laughs> so how do you get started? How do you even go about doing this? Right. So first, you need to figure out what's a brokerage account versus a broker. Benny, you want to hit that one? Yeah. So a broker is actually an individual that will kind of make investment decisions on your behalf. Um, a brokerage account is just a thing that you put money into that allows you to then self-direct your own investments. Uh, kind of right. major difference in terms of cost, right? Because the broker is an individual that needs to be paid that's a professional. Exactly. So why wouldn't you just pay them? That's why, <laughs> right there. Yeah. So according to the Center for American Progress, the average person pays about 140 grand in fees during their lifetime. Um, there's multiple different ways to calculate fees depending on the broker. Some are as much as 1% of your total portfolio, which that can be a disgusting amount of money as that adds up over time. Uh, especially if you watch Vinny's, Vinny's video on the why, you know, at the end of that 30 year term, some of those accounts are 1.2 million. So you're, you're paying quite a bit there. Um, there are some other brokerages I found where after 30 years, about 180 grand that you put in yourself, about you pay about 178 grand in fees. So Jeez. crazy. Yeah, right? exactly. Wild. <laughs> Just shocking. <laughs> so how do I choose a brokerage account? Okay. Here are some of the well-known brokerage accounts. There are more. There's, these are not any better or worse, but they are different. And that's what we're going to go over real quick just to kind of get this out there. So TD Ameritrade, one, they're recently bought by Charles Schwab. They trade a ton of mutual funds. Actually, Vinny, what's a mutual fund? So a mutual fund is kind of a construct where you put money into it and, and investment professional will pick investments that go into that fund in the fund kind of has like a broad idea of what it's trying to accomplish. Exactly. So literally you can just invest in a mutual fund and almost cut out the broker. And it literally makes that that easy. Um, they have great research and tools, very good customer service. They do not have the best mobile app. It's not terrible. They have no fractional shares. Um, fractional shares are, let's say I want to buy a share of Amazon because I really believe in them. Uh, but I have 500 bucks. Their their current stock price is about 3,000. So you can't buy a share. Um, fractional shares allow you to literally do what it says, buy a fraction of a share. Yeah. Um, they have a high margin rate. Margin is where you borrow money. Um, we talked about that in my portfolio video, but you would owe between 7.5 and 10% interest on those. So Charles Schwab, also a great research and platform. They do have fractional shares. They do have great customer service. Um, their mobile app is uh, horrible, in my opinion. Um, they also have a high margin rate and they have a very low cash interest percentage on uninvested funds. So you'll earn like 0.1%, which is essentially nothing. So, yeah. Uh, Fidelity. They also have fractional shares and mutual funds. Uh, Charles Schwab had mutual funds too. All the big ones do. Um, they have a decent margin rate, but you have to have 50K to take advantage of it. Some of the cons, they have really high broker assist fees if you needed the help of a broker. And if you if you don't do options trading, just forget this. This I don't want to confuse you. But basically, placing option trades with Fidelity, I was reading a bunch of reviews because I've never actually used them, but a lot of people are complaining about how complex it was. Um, E-Trade, so they have a decent amount of promotions for just giving you 50 bucks just to open an account. 
they have a pretty good mobile app. They have a lot of mutual funds. Um, some of the others though, they do have high margin rates and they also don't have fractional shares, which I was kind of surprised to see that. Yeah. Know that. And uh, they can have a difficult website, but it's not the worst. If you are new to investing, you can go with any one of those four and be happy. I would mm -hmm. choose one that has fractional shares to make that easier on you. Agreed. I definitely would too. So Webull, they're, they're a little bit newer to the game. They have one of the best mobile apps uh, there is. They have access to cryptocurrency, which I'm, I'm not going to. You do you on that if you want to you want to do that. I, it's not my thing. Yeah, Dogecoin, um, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they have easy to read level two data. Uh, I'll explain that in a different video. Basically, it's pockets of liquidity, so you can kind of guess where a, a stock may be going. Um, and free options. Yeah. The other ones charge you 65 cents for options. It really doesn't matter. They do not have mutual funds. They have high margin rates unless you have $3 million. They do not have the best charting software, nor do they have fractional shares, and they have very poor customer service. Mm -hmm. So no live chatting, no live branches, all the other places, you know, they got something for you there. And then the famous Robin Hood, okay? So this is what I use. Um, they easily have the easiest to use mobile app. They're actually being sued for how easy to use it is because it makes it stocks look, uh, it makes investing look like a game. Um, they have access to crypto, they have fractional shares, and they have the absolute lowest margin rate that you can find. So 2.5%. That means if I borrow $100 after a year, I'll owe them $2.50 which $100 is not that much, but if it's like 50,000, that's a lot. Yeah, it's pretty crazy that you can, your the margin rate is less than like a, you know, a car loan or, or even a yeah, mortgage at this point. Insanely low. And all you have to have is more than a thousand dollars. It's not like you need wow. 150 grand to get that rate. It's just a thousand. Yeah, they, I mean, they are encouraging you to trade on margin. Like, they are, they are, mm -hmm. which is not, you know, it's not the greatest idea. That's why I get sued a lot. So, <laughs> They they did have issues with outages early in 2020. Everyone had some, but theirs lasted like 10 minutes. Uh, Robin Hood just lasted like three days. That was solid. You couldn't buy or sell anything that was happening. If you had options that were expiring, you were screwed. Uh, the GME AMC scandal, that's the GameStop thing that everyone was hearing about um, with the short squeeze. They did something where they just said, hey, you can't trade these stocks anymore. They essentially ran out of money. Basically, that's what happens. When you have a low margin rate. Um, they uh, they had to limit those stocks specifically. Uh, no mutual funds. They were getting sued about a year and a half ago for not fulfilling the best price for their customers. So brokers are obligated to get the best price for you. Um, basically, with them, you could buy something that was at ten dollars, and then you're fill price what you actually get it for is like ten dollars and twenty cents so not great but that is not an issue anymore i can personally attest to that yeah. um the worst customer service in the history of mankind <laughs> that's accurate i have emailed them a couple times and i just i haven't heard back it's been about nine months um <laughs> it was during those outages actually so i think they just said all right we're not going to respond to emails for this week um and there's you know there's no live locations or live chatting so at your own risk if you will <laughs> uh so how much money do i put in Vinny? yeah i mean <clears throat> it's really a question of your own comfort um anything that you invest particularly in the beginning i would tell you is, is money that you should be okay with like you know as in you should still be able to you know feed yourself and have a roof over your head if you lose it all uh, because you are going to have to pay for your knowledge a little bit up front <clears throat> and definitely it's uh, a little challenging at work at first you know kind of figuring out this whole new world as Dylan was saying it's, you know it's, it has its own language um, but it is important that you learn that um, even if you only learn to respect what the broker does for you at least you've kind of gained knowledge in this you know, rather crucial realm, I think. Um, exactly. Another option that you have available to you is something called paper trading. So I, like I said, I know at least Webull through their app allows you to paper trade where you can create an account, put a fictional number of dollars into it, 
and uh, then you know track how your investments would have performed uh, had you purchased them at the time that you you know plan to. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's definitely a great skill set to do. Um, you know, it, it's a challenge where, you know, if you did that for a while, you could certainly learn some lessons for it. But, you know, you the way you act when it's your own real money on the line is different from when you'll act when it's fake money. So, yeah, you get a lot more risky when it's fake. Yeah, it's, it's not a perfect translation of uh, what you're investment knowledge and, and risk tolerance is at that point it's better than nothing but you get much more risky you just like bet everything on you know yeah some options trade expiring two days from now exactly yeah <laughs> so we picked our broker we set aside a set amount of funds i don't want this slide to be too complicated so i'm going to go over this real in depth okay so we we got to the basics of, of how we can start trading but now um sorry on on who to choose and stuff but now we got to figure out how so what is a bid ask spread and this i'm going to make this as simple as possible so i have two stocks here roku and carnival so roku is the the kind of the streaming deal on tv carnival is a cruise line so the price of the stock doesn't really have anything to do with how valuable it is um for instance uh apple is worth uh, like 2.2 trillion or something. Yeah. Um, Roku's worth not remotely close to that, but it has more of a share price. Yeah. So basically the bid ask spread, the bid is what the buyer is willing to pay. Okay. So buyers are saying, I'm willing to pay this amount. Sellers are saying, I'm only willing to sell for this amount. And this is the overall price of the stock. Tons of different brokerages have this in the top corner. It just looks like a bunch of numbers and it's kind of intimidating. Um, so basically, money makers, and we won't go into this too much, but money makers make money between the spread. See how this is about 56 cents difference? So basically, if you wanted to buy this stock, you may be willing to pay this, but you may be filled at a much higher number than you wanted. And you'll know that beforehand based on how close these numbers are together. So those are a little bit more risky of stocks. Okay. Carnival has much more shares traded per day than Roku. It's bid spread is less than one cent. So if you were to buy, you would get filled at only one cent more than the actual price, which is a lot better. I've seen spreads that are $3. I've seen spreads that are $5. Those are stocks that I would recommend you to stay away from. It's just not worth it. There's too many other ways to make money and it's just too risky. You could, you get a horrible entry starting out of the gate and the entry is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, if you're sticking to large, well-known companies, you don't have to really yep. worry about the bid ask spread too much. It becomes more important with like options trading or like, you know, really small, like penny stock kind of companies. Uh, but it, it is still good to understand that, you know, the bid and the ask that represent actual orders in the market right now. There's someone else there with that number out right now. That That's what that represents. Exactly. And Roku, you know, it's small cap stocks can have an issue sometimes. <clears throat> so I'm not going to try to make this too dry. So I'm going to make this as easy as possible. <laughs> there are three types of orders. Let's you have your broker, you have your, your money, you want to buy something. Okay. A market order is saying you want to buy this stock now, and I spelled now wrong. <laughs> Just realized that. <laughs> All right, two stupid yeah. guys trade stocks. Right? Exactly. The broker has to get the best price for you. That's that. That's part of their agreement. However, you may you're saying that you'll buy it at any price close to that price. So if there's a huge flush when you put your order in, let's say that the stock just goes up insanely fast okay um what you saw the number at and what you get filled at meaning what you actually buy the stock at may not be close to what you wanted to control this you would do a limit order mm -hmm. this is saying i want to buy the stock but there's a maximum i'm willing to pay the stock's at 300 i'm only willing to pay 300 dollars and five cents not 301 dollars. this ensures that you get the absolute best fill price and uh if the stock never drops to the amount that you're willing to pay, you're going to miss out on it. I use limit orders quite frequently. 
because it gives you just that much better of an entry. Okay. This is the most important part. <laughs> you do not want to have a motion when you're trading. Okay. What's that famous thing, Finney, that the market can stay? Oh, what, what is that? The market remain irrational far longer than you can remain liquid. There we go. I don't care how much you believe in a company, right? If enough people hate it and they have more money, then they're just going to kill it. Okay. So after purchasing a stock, you send an order saying that the stock drops to a certain price. You, your broker automatically sells it. This way you do not have to constantly watch stocks. It just goes. If I buy something at 300 and I have my stop loss at 295, I don't care if it ends up going to 220 within the next week. I sold around 295. Mm -hmm. Okay. So take emotion out of your stock play. Yeah. It really depends on your kind of investing that you're doing. You know, with Dylan's kind of strategy that that is typically what you would do. Um, yeah. You know, whereas oh, like that's true. We should clarify that. Yeah. Long term investing, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Exactly. If, if you bought a stock at 300 and it drops to 200, you start going like, huh, do I have more money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. called averaging down your cost. Yeah, I do not do that. Exactly. But, you know. Yeah, it's complicated, but. So now it's time to work on the what. So what kind of stocks do I buy? This this is kind of hard <laughs> at first, but eventually you should get into it. It gets really easy. So one, just just go with what you know. So everyone's heard of Apple, Target, Costco. Look up your favorite company, maybe like Lululemon. I was a gamer. I was a big gamer. So my first stocks were EA and Activision. They make video games. Nice. Um, yeah. So just go with what you know. And then you could also just type into Google, literally, is, is Apple a buy? And you're going to get tons of information <laughs> on people saying, yes, it is. No, it's not. And why they think it is or it isn't. There's tons of people that do analyst stuff for a living they're going to be smarter than you or I. So you could just take some of the recommendations, but just know that for every person that's saying it's a buy, there's someone saying it's a sell because when have humans ever agreed on anything? Yeah, exactly. Um, you could just do Vinny does this, you know, what did Warren Buffett just buy? He's, he's a legend. He bought Apple. All right. I'll buy 10% Apple, you know, uh, whatever. In fairness, I beat him to that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, there's some other people. Mike, what's his name? Michael, Michael Burry. Burry, Michael, yeah. Michael Burry, uh, Catherine Head. Uh, Wood. 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 Catherine Wood. Wood. Yeah, ARK Invest. Yeah, they do this for a living. So they're going to, you could just take what they do. <laughs> you could also look at a one, a one year, five year chart of a stock. If it's trending up, it's probably in good shape, right? If it's trending down, maybe don't stay away. That's a very big generalization, but <laughs> yes. it doesn't hurt. Uh, never invest in a stock right away. If someone told you about, uh, I don't know, GameStop, that's movie a pass. Game. Movie pass, sure. Uh, you should do some research in it before <laughs> before you do it. Okay. I made a lot of money off that, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to make weekly long and short recommendations on this channel. Um, we're actually going to upload two today. So it's going to have kind of Vinny style where you can just sit it, um, buy it and let it sit. And then mine where you need to be on your toes, but you can make a decent amount of money. So the when, when do I buy or sell stocks? So this is the art of buying and selling. Okay. The entry is the most important part. Also, Warren Buffett agrees with that. Right? True, true. So, boom. So if you're long term, it's when you think the stock is cheap. If you're trying to swing trade it, entry is much more important. It's all about your analysis. And uh, that's a whole separate video that would take like nine hours. So or just do the weekly stock picks and then you get the hang of it. Yeah. So Vinny, you want to talk about this guy short term versus long term? Yeah, it's, it's certainly something to consider. Like one of the kind of, it's a little previous step is that you can either choose to trade within a tax sheltered or like a taxable account. I personally do all my trading within like a tax sheltered account. Um, so it, tax considerations are less important to me, uh, meaning like you can trade within retirement savings basically. What's um, a tax sheltered account? 
Well, tax sheltered, it's a retirement account. So meaning like there we go. Yeah, any gains that I, I, I make with the account, I don't really have to worry about from a taxation standpoint until I turn 59 and a half and the withdrawing and then I'll pay income taxes on it at that point. So we're um, saying a 401k. Yeah, well, IRA. Um, it, it, in terms of the impact of a on a taxable account, it's much more important. Um, yes. yes um, you, you know, you hear a lot about like how you know, the super wealthy are able to pay these very low, um, you know, tax rates. And this is part of the reason why is that investment income is treated differently from uh, regular like employment income. Employment income is taxed on, taxed on this uh, ladder where, um, you know, it's increasing percentages. Whereas uh, when you're looking at like investment income, uh, if you're under a certain threshold, um, I believe it's actually even eighty thousand dollars for a family for a for dividends, um, you know, a couple filing jointly, you don't pay any income taxes. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then over that, I think it's fifteen percent. So it, it, it's much lower rates than what you're looking at when it comes to like traditional employment income. Right. So this is actually from the Internal Revenue Service website. So long-term gains, the, the you can't pay more than 20. Um, basically, if you're married, file jointly. If you make over this amount, that's going to be 20. If you're under that, it's going to be 15. So it's kind of capped. This gets a lot worse the more you make. Um, you know, single, oh, let's say you make, oh, I mean, that's a lot, but like 180 or it's going to be 32 percent. 37 is over this number and that's, you know, essentially double the long term. So it's something definitely to take into account because that adds up quite a bit. Yeah. As uh, someone said, it, it's, it's not what you make, it's what you keep that matters. Exactly. And, uh, you know, tax mitigation is certainly a, a something to consider when it comes to how much of your income you get to keep. Right. Oh, I guess we should go over wash sales. I just thought of that. Watch. Okay. If you're doing a stock and you sell it for a loss, meaning you lost money on it, and then you buy it within 30 days, that's called a wash sale. You don't want to do that. Um, it's not the worst thing. It just puts off the amount of time that you can actually claim the loss. Mm. So what else to keep in mind? What's the ultimate goal, right? Yeah, exactly. That financial independence. Financial freedom and independence. Anything exactly. to make your life just a little bit easier. And you know, everyone wants to be here, right? <laughs> it looks beautiful. Yeah, we just want to chill. Yeah, yeah. So this is a picture that I really like. Um, basically, you can't fall into the hype because if you're on, you know, any social media in the comments, everyone is lying because <laughs> everyone should be a billionaire then. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. People are saying, and there definitely are people who are getting massive gains and you know, really, really killing the game here. But the average person is not. Yeah. Um, exactly. This is a person essentially on the Instagram account, it looks like she's on a private jet, right? Um, she's throwing it up, making it look like she's having a great time and stuff. And then in reality, it's actually, she, she's at a clothing store mm -hmm. and they have this in the back. Uh, there's a lot of these. So yeah, if, if uh, so, someone's trying to sell you investment advice and they have a picture in front of a Lamborghini with a private jet oh, in the background, that's a should, good one. 100% not take their investment advice. Yeah, not at all. Don't even click on the YouTube video. It's yeah. every, it's not it's not real. Yeah, exactly. But uh, if it's like two random guys on the internet, like, you know, just in front of a bunch of books, like we probably know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the only way that you should measure yourself, and I don't even know if you should do this, but the only way that you should measure your account is against the spy. If the spy return 10 percent for 2020 i don't it didn't that's just a random number i have no idea uh, and you did okay there you go and you did 12 percent or two percent more you did a great job yeah. that's all that matters exactly uh these are just some educational resources there's a lot more than just this i you know I, we got books on books on books back here but yeah, exactly uh i really liked trading in the zone it's all about psychology and how to really respect the stop losses and stuff like that. And then how to swing trades, just like a basic entry to that. Uh, you want to talk about these other two things? Uh, so Rich Dad Poor Dad is, is not really about stocks per se, but it's about how you should think about and approach money. Um, right. You know, it, it's, it's 
something that we were really not taught about in school and that it's often like a taboo topic, even still amongst adults where uh, people don't really want to discuss it openly. And, um, you know, this is a book that helps kind of get the right mindset for what you should do with money. Um, another book to kind of talk about is the total one I make over by Dave Ramsey, a uh, very prominent YouTuber here. We agree with him on some things, disagree with him adamantly on some other things, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, he still has a very basic strategy on how to get yourself uh, in financially fit and in a position where you can begin to take uh, advantage of the offerings of the stock market and other investment vehicles. Um, so I believe it's a good foundational book. Um, that being said, like remember, it is very basic. It is made for you know people that have zero impulse control and that sort of stuff. And but it, it's right. still a good read. So yeah, the, the first two are more stock, like a really specific to stocks. The second two are mindset, but they're both equally as important. They're, exactly. they're, they're both very important. Um, Investopedia is where I'll go. Uh, this is how I learned how to do options. They have <laughs> essentially, it's just the Wikipedia for stocks. Mm -hmm. And then Finviz, we'll do a whole separate video on this, but Finviz is a great way to access the fundamentals of stocks. So, you know, what their debt is, what their price to earnings ratio is, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Exactly. All right. So I hope that helped. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you guys for for joining us. And please uh, leave any questions you have down in the comments below. Um, you know, Dylan and I would love to do future videos and help answer any of those questions or, you know, reply individually as well. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. If there's a, uh, yeah, leave any comments if there's something that you don't understand. I'm, I, I would love the help in any way. So. Well, thank you. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.